Tony Casillas, one of the 93,000 plus in attendance yeah. here today as the Cowboys beat Baltimore 27-17. Tony, nine straight wins in a regular season. First time a Cowboy team's ever done this. Kind of hard to believe it. It is, and, and just how the whole the chemistry of the game went from beginning to end to, to imagine them winning nine straight, and we talk about this every week, Mike, the, the leadership of these young guys, but I think it's a combination of the young and the old, and it's the same again. Every week they do something different. Nine wins, I mean, that's uh, remarkable considering the whole situation this year. One of the young guys, of course, Dak Prescott, who leads this team, struggled early on, yeah. was under a lot of pressure. Uh, the offense really couldn't get going. I think they punted four straight times, but Prescott was 14 of 15 in the second half. Just talk about what you saw again from the young quarterback as he takes another step forward today. Well, I think that we knew that the, the Ravens are going to be a formidable opponent, especially defense, but how many times this year have they played a good defense and they've been able to run the football against them with at ease? And, and, and I, you look at the front seven, especially the front four, the Ravens, that's a big test. There was no space for Ezekiel to run all day long. And I think the most thing I was impressed with was the, the inability for them to get outside, the Cowboys. But I think they just kept their game plan. They didn't really, they didn't panic, but they knew if they just kept grinding the ball, hopefully they would get some yardage there. But it's, it was definitely the biggest test that they've had this year on offense. And Zeke Elliott was bottled up for a while, 26 yards yeah. in the first half. Uh, Garrett talked after the game about how he thought the physicality of the Cowboys wore the Ravens down. Usually when you think Baltimore, it's the other way around. Right. That says a lot about the way this team can batter and bruise an opponent. Well, and that's a, that's a key is because you look, you keep it close, you get to the third or fourth quarter, and all of a sudden those big bodies are leaning on you. I mean, they're, they, they're, the front four of the Ravens are, were, 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 are very big in, in physicality-wise. So I think you just kind of keep kind of pushing and pushing. And they kept the score close. And I think, I think Zeke and the, their offense a little bit more patient the second half because uh, there was nothing there the, the first half. So I think some of those things opened up. And, of course, they were able to throw the football and open it up just a little bit. Uh, you know, Cole Beasley was tremendous at times, impromptu times, made some big plays. So I think it just kind of ultimately just kept them on their heels and gave them enough space to be able to finally move the football. And Des Bryant had six catches for 80 yards and two touchdowns. It was just a couple of weeks ago we were talking about how frustrated Des was. He wasn't yeah. getting calls from the refs, wasn't getting the ball as much as he would have liked. He's put together back-to-back -back really nice games now in the face of a personal tragedy, losing his dad. Oh, yeah, it's just a very just a tough, uh, just a challenging performance on his part. I mean, look at you know today his presence, two touchdowns, and. And you could just tell he's willing his way across the end zone with so much determination. Again, it's just hard to play with a heavy heart. But yeah, it's just a, it's just a gutsy performance by a guy that just you saw in the game, Mike, just didn't want to be denied. And you could tell that he had that passion in this football game and, and it's in a sense playing for his dad. The big story of the week was the Tony Romo speech on Tuesday, sort of a concession speech where he said, I know this is Dak's team. I don't necessarily like it. I still think I can play, but I know why Dak has to be the man right now. What did you think as you watched that? Class. I mean, I think if anyone, you know, Tony Romo's gotten beat up so many times as far as his play, whether it's, you know, making an interception or just not good enough. I think if you didn't like Tony Romo to watch that press conference, the way he handled it, because we talk about this every week. It's very difficult to swallow your pride and to see someone take your job. And I think for him, I thought he was very sincere, Mike. I, mean, I think he, he pulled back the curtain and people really kind of could figure out and really knew mostly how he felt. And to me, that's very hard to do considering the circumstances. And with that in mind, and Dak was asked about this today and, and Garrett was, it, it had to be a weird week for Dak Prescott because of that yeah. Romo stuff going on in the background. But they managed to focus, and we get tired in, in the media of hearing Jason Garrett talking about one meeting, yeah. one practice, yeah. one game at a time. But it's during times like this that that philosophy really pays off, doesn't it? And I think a lot of people, they kind of blow it out of proportion. You know, what's Dak Prescott going to do with Tony Romo finally being active on the sidelines? And I just think there's a really authentic relationship between those two guys. And it just, it just to me, it just shows how mature Dak Prescott is as a player, as a person, and how he can compartmentalize everything that's happening. And today we saw it again. Two touch, you know, three touchdown passes, uh, quarterback rating, I believe, 125. And, and, and he struggled the first half, but again, he just kept coming back and never lost his poise and just continued to make great throws. And I think that this goes to show 
behind the curtain, we really don't see what's going on, but they've developed this relationship. And again, it's so hard to watch someone take your job, uh, knowingly that you may not ever play for that team again. We overlooked this defense, but here we are in another game where they allowed, you yeah. know, 17 points. And Baltimore has struggled offensively, yeah. but they got a Super Bowl winning quarterback there in Joe Flacco. Well, and I think everyone kind of underestimated that. Uh, they struggled. They haven't been able to run the football. Today, they were able to run the football in the first half. It didn't look like the, the offense that we've seen Baltimore have over the last two or three weeks. And they had some playmakers. Uh, Mike Wallace and you know, the ageless Steve Smith Sr. doesn't look like a senior, looks more like a junior, putting, putting some plays together. And I think you cannot, when you play John Harbaugh, you really can't underestimate what they can do. And finally, you've been in this position several times where now it's the, it's the quick turnaround, and now everybody in the league yeah. plays on a Thursday during the season, but the Cowboys do it every year. What's it like to have this accelerated week of preparation? I think, is, I think playing home is definitely an advantage because you know that you're going to get some time off and you play a, an opponent like the Redskins and it's a division opponent. I don't think it takes you too much to get up for the game, considering it is a division game. In the past, it hasn't been like that, but I think it might have, kind of refocuses you. And I think the Otis is always on a traveling team because it's a short week for them. They only get three days of preparation and you're on a plane and you're coming here. Uh, without a doubt, I think that it's, it's favor for the player. And I always, I always enjoy the, the atmosphere of playing on Thanksgiving. Well, the people enjoy having you here. You've had a lot of people stopping you for autographs and stuff down here. Got to, got to stop and sign some more. Uh, and I know Tony Casillas was one of the few people who predicted a 9-1 and one start for this football team before, <laughs> before it started. Uh, I, think yeah. we, I think we lost that tape. Uh, I, I think I said 10-6, and six, <laughs> but uh, nine wins in a row. It's amazing. It's a very and, nine and one team, and I, and I know you 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 were close to predicting that too, right, Mike? It's a team that I, I thought would be eight and eight, so I'm <laughs> I'm now officially wrong already. That's Tony Casillas here at AT&T Stadium. Tony, as always, thanks. Absolutely, Mike.